Welcome to the broadcast service for the United Parish of Kilinchy, Kilmood and Tulnakil for the first Sunday of the new year. Our service is led by the Bishop of Darnandramore, the Right Reverend David Maclay. Happy New Year, everyone. All the years that I was a rector, I, I liked if I could, and it wasn't always possible to be around and in the pulpit on the first Sunday in January. There's something, I think, very opportunistic about the first Sunday of a new year. It provides much more than just opportunities for New Year resolutions. There's something poignant for us about moving from one year to another year. And for those, for example, who have been bereaved during the year that's passed, the year 2020, moving from 2020 into 2021 will be moving from a year where your loved one was part of the year that's passed, but will no longer be physically present in any way during the year that lies ahead. 
that can be painful and can be very poignant. There are other things that we choose to lay before God and hand over to God at the end of an old year and at the start of a new year. Things that we choose to put behind us. Things that we choose to ask God to deal with in, in our lives. More than even any of that, we should Use and move into a new year as a people who are seeking to be full of faith and full of courage and a people who are trusting and believing in God, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. A new year is an opportunity for us to embrace all that God has in store for us. This morning's reading is from Ephesians chapter 1 is full of so much that we should want to hear at the start of a new year. Truths that we should really want to grasp and make our own at the start of a new year. John Stott describes these opening verses of Ephesians chapter 1 as a kaleidoscope of dazzling lights and shifting colours. Another writer likens these verses to a snowball tumbling down a hill, picking up volume, as it descends. John Mackey compares these verses to the overture of an opera, which contains the successive melodies that are to follow. And so this morning, first of all, our sights in these verses are lifted towards God the Father and the blessings that flow from God the Father and of whom God our Father is the source Ephesians 1 verses 3 and 4, blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places, even as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and blameless before him. As we move into a new year, God is our Father, and our Father God is the source of of all the blessings that are in store for us in this new year and indeed throughout the remainder of our, of our lives. James summed it up in a similar sort of way in uh, chapter 1 of his epistle. He said, Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variation or shadow due to change. As we move into a new year, these verses make it clear that our status as God's children is God's gift to us. In verse 4, we're reminded that God chose us. Paul here goes on to remind us that our friendship and our relationship with God is God's gift to us. Verse 5, he predestined us. The riches of our being and of our living and of our belonging and of our knowing God are, are God's gift to us. Verse 6, he has lavished us with his grace. He has lavished us with his goodness. He's poured his goodness out upon us and our futures are in his hand. Even the gift of eternal life itself and abundant life right here and now are God's gift to us. They, they come freely to us from the Father who blesses us. And such blessings that are ours have been entrusted to us, they've been given to us, but not without responsibility. We are blessed in order that we might bless many around us and be a blessing to others around us. So as we commence a new year, let's choose in our churches to be those who bless others, who in knowing that we are blessed by our Father God, choose to be a blessing. Choose to be a blessing by, for example, being generous and, uh, and those of us who can give in this new year, being those who do give really generously so that we bless people in our churches, we bless others in our communities and in our parishes, that we as a church 
are a blessing in our nation and are a blessing to our world. Having come to know God as Father, as those who have been chosen by him, those upon whom he has lavished his grace and his kindness, those whom he has given to us grace to believe and grace to trust in him and grace to know him and grace to receive his gift of life and all its fullness and grace to experience the blessings that he showers upon us, the blessings of eternal life. Let's be those who really treasure that privilege and know that we have been blessed and therefore choose to bless others with the blessings that we have received. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing. I love the stories that the Reverend Jim Ray, a retired Methodist minister, has recently put together in a book that he has just very recently published. And uh, in one of those stories, Jim tells a, a lovely little story of how in the 1980s and the 1990s he was a, a motorcycle enthusiast. He, he, he writes humorously, not that my 150cc hybrid scooter would have made any impact at the Ulster Grand Prix. But he tells a story of how on his way back from Scarborough Cricket Festival that he decided to, to change his route and travel home via the west coast of England, rather the east coast of England. Uh, and about 50 miles from Arbroath, he, he writes this, uh, about 50 miles from Arbroath, I stopped at a roadside hot food van for a cup of tea. I noticed a young man, probably in his early 20s, standing looking into the hedge as he drank his tea or coffee. I noticed his small motorcycle, a Honda 90. Suddenly, something prompted me to go and offer him a tenner. I thought he might consider me mad, so I gently approached him and said, you may find this very strange, but I've just been prompted to give you a ten-pound note. The guy looked at me and smiled. He then told me that he was unemployed and was on his way to Arbroath to a job interview. I'm almost out of petrol, he said. I have no money. I am praying to God that something would turn up. Jim continues in the story to tell us I couldn't believe it. I wished him well and gave him the money with my visiting card, hoping that he would get the job. A few weeks passed, I got a letter from him explaining that he was a Christian and a member of a church in Yorkshire. He had got the job in one of Arbro's fish processing companies. He was amazed at how his prayer was answered, and he thanked me. It's a bit of an out-there story, isn't it? But we've got a, an out-there God who does out-there things. And we're blessed by our Father God, and we're called out of our blessings to be a blessing. Secondly, these verses of Paul in Ephesians chapter 1 Tell us about Jesus. Paul keeps on talking in these verses and keeps on naming Jesus. Verse 3, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly realms. Verse 5, He predestined us for adoption to himself as sons through Jesus Christ. And Paul, in the verses that follow, continue, actually, I think about 11 times, he, he tells us, in him we are believers, in him we are saints, in him we are blessed, in him we are chosen, in him we have grace, in him we have redemption, in him we have forgiveness, in him we are sealed as those who belong to Jesus Christ. In him, in Jesus, we are part of God's plan for this planet Earth. In him, in Jesus, we are part of God's plan for Ireland. In him, in Jesus, we are part of God's plan 
for our parishes and him and Jesus we are part of God's plan for our families and that's a humbling thing it's not something to be proud of but it's something that we should see as privilege as incredible privilege because of Jesus we're blessed so as we move into 2021 the name Jesus should be on our lips we need to be telling people about Jesus in 2021 we need to be introducing people to Jesus in 2021 Malcolm Muggeridge was a, a journalist he became a Christian and uh, he, he spoke at all sorts of gatherings and uh, he was an intellectual and he was invited often to speak on all sorts of subjects uh, he, he writes I used to be invited but not so much now because my message is always the same come to Jesus come to Christ I get asked what are the issues facing the Russians and I answer they must come to Christ the Palestinians the Israelis they must come to Christ the British the Irish the rich the poor they need to come to Christ they need to come to Jesus whoever we are we're invited to come to Christ and, and the church in 2021 and always needs to be a church that calls people to follow Jesus Christ God and I pray he will may take us to new places and to different places and in different directions in 2021 but in all those places and in all those directions may God anoint us and equip us and give us the courage and the boldness to call and to invite people to come to Christ and thirdly these verses of Paul challenge us to set our hearts to focus our minds on the things that are of the Spirit the things that are of the Holy Spirit verses 13 and 14 in him you also when you heard the word of truth the gospel of your salvation and believed in him were sealed with the promised Holy Spirit who is the guarantee of our inheritance until we acquire possession of it to the praise of his glory God wants to bless us that doesn't mean that 2021 will be a straightforward year or an easy year or without its challenges or without its pains or without its difficulties without its disappointments without its moments of of, of deep sadness or, or or grief or loss but in all of that and through all of that in 2021 God will want to bless us with every spiritual blessing Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places. In Christ, when we're found in Christ, people are blessed. Blessed by God the Father, blessed by God the Son, and blessed by God the Holy Spirit. And in our uncertain world as we move into 2021, let's bless those around us let's be those who receive the blessings of God so that we are out of the overflow of our hearts and lives those that are a blessing to those around us and in a deeper way know the blessing of the blessed assurance that Jesus is ours and out of that blessed assurance live lives that point people to Jesus in our uncertain world let's be humble followers of Jesus Christ in a world of arrogance and of pride let's let's be different let's be like him and we're given a picture of him by Paul in Philippians who though he was in the form of God did not count equality with God a thing to be grasped but emptied himself by taking the form of a servant being born in the likeness of men and being found in human form he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death even death on a cross and he done all of this did all of this to make us his sons and his daughters not slaves 
or those whose lives lack purpose or direction. Verse 10, as a plan for the fullness of time to unite all things in him, things in heaven and things on earth. The gospel of Jesus Christ brings people together, unites people. Let's in 2021 work to see people reconciled to Christ and to each other. Because one day, colour or race or language will no longer separate the redeemed church of God gathered before his throne in heaven. John in Revelation chapter 7 gives us a picture of that church. After this I looked and behold a great multitude that no one could count from every nation, from all tribes and peoples and languages, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed in white robes with palm branches in their hands, and crying out with a loud voice, Salvation belongs to our God, who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. No arguments there. No arguments then over skin colour or over nationality. No walls then that divide, but all one in Christ Jesus. So as the church moves into 2021, as we move forward into a new year, let's choose to set aside prejudice of race or prejudice of nationality or of politics or of language. And let's, in the church, make the main thing the main thing. Proclaiming Christ. Proclaiming Christ faithfully to the nations. Proclaiming Christ faithfully to this nation. We're one expression of God's church in Ireland. We're not the only expression. We may not even be the best expression. But we are the Church of Ireland in Ireland. Positioned in parish communities. uh, With some diocesan missional areas. And uh, with all sorts of opportunities to proclaim Christ. And to bring people to Christ. To lead people to Jesus Stott said there's no wall between the church and the world. Yet many Christians meet behind the walls of church buildings and ecclesiastical traditions. Let's in 2021 make sure that we answer God's call and become God's people and God's church that point people towards our God. God the Father who loved us. God the Son Jesus Christ who has redeemed us. God, the Holy Spirit, who sanctifies us and let's invite him to visit our communities and our churches in 2021. In 2021, in all our parishes and in all our lives, let's put evangelism at the very top of our agenda. Because as someone that I knew well used to say, If it's not at the top, it falls off the bottom. I want to pray that we would know God's blessings, all of us, in this new year of 2021. Our communities and our parishes and many people around us have lives that are groaning. Our country is groaning. Our world is groaning. But, but... God blesses us to be a blessing. The psalmist said, Blessed be the nation whose God is the Lord, the people whom he has chosen as his heritage. That's God's call for his church in 2021. Stott again said it is because of God's gracious will to save that evangelism has any hope of success and faith becomes possible. So friends, we preach Christ. We welcome God's Holy Spirit's presence. 
and we demonstrate the love and the compassion of our Father God. And we do it all for God's glory. Paul here concludes in verse 14. We acquire possession of it to the praise of his glory. You may recognize the words of a song that's often used at rugby matches uh, in these islands. Ireland, Ireland, together standing tall, shoulder to shoulder we'll answer Ireland's call. I'd like to insert there in that last line, Ireland, Ireland, together standing tall, shoulder to shoulder, we'll answer in 2021 Christ's call. Let us pray. Lord, thank you that you've positioned us in family and in church families and in communities and that you've in trusted to us the most privileged call to share with those around us the blessings that we have received from our generous, loving Heavenly Father to proclaim Christ and to proclaim Jesus Christ faithfully to our world and to pray that in the power of God the Holy Spirit, our lives and our communities would be saturated, would be soaked with the love of Christ in Christ Jesus our Lord. That many in this year would believe in him. That our churches would become strong for him and for his glory and that lives and communities would be transformed by the power of his gospel in the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen.